Welcome into the Cactus Classic. Why are we here? Because this is another installment of the qualifying round for the Run for a Million in Las Vegas coming up this fall. And who better to talk about that than the brainchild, the man who created it, Taylor Sheridan. Taylor, thanks so much for joining us today. Man, I'm so excited about this year. Uh, you know, if we think about it, let's think about, let's just go back to 2022 for a second, where we had five runs over 230 legitimately over 230. Um, and then I think about the horses that are back here today. I, I walk out yesterday and who's who's in the pen warming up but Nathan Piper and Patriot. I know, that's one of the <laughs> unbelievable storylines for this show. The Patriots coming back out of retirement. I mean, that horse has been great since he was three and he saved the best run of what is a Hall of Fame first ballot career for yes. the Run for a Million Finals last year. It was unbelievable. And he's back just because if you ask Nathan Piper, he's like, why not? Yeah. Hey. Horse is fresh. He loves it. The way he showed last time he was out. Well, who wouldn't? Yeah. I I, I can't wait. Uh, I hope he gets qualified with him. It would be a lot of fun to have him back. There are so many things that make this event shape up to a great year. And talk about... You know, your inspiration for this event was you wanted to help the performance horse industry. You wanted to give it a shot in the arm. You've done that. But what is it about Run for a Million, about this show, that has made it the most prestigious title? It is a destination for non-pro riders, for just fans of the sport. People are now planning their vacations around three, four days in Vegas just to watch a horse show. And that's never happened before. What is it about this event that's made that happen? Well, I think that, you know, when we first, when I first came up with the idea uh, and, and, I, and I spoke to Mandy about it, I said, I, I want to make a show for the spectator and not for the competitors. I'll get money for the competitors. This is their job. Yeah. I don't really care if they think it's a good horse show. They're going to think it's a good horse show if they win. Okay. But I want to make a great experience for the audience because today's spectator is tomorrow's participant. And you can see the effect that it's had when you just walk out in that pen and there's all these trainers that I've never seen before that have either stepped over from the pleasure horse or they've come over. There's, there's so many people out there I don't know and that did not happen five years ago. Five mm -hmm. years ago, you knew everybody. And then you started seeing fewer and fewer show up, not five, 10. Um, and so the idea was, hey, let's introduce the world to it. Let's make a show that brings everybody together. And it also addressed the issue of a horse's six and then it's done, it's career's over. And there's no money in the open of the non-pro, so we don't do that. Uh, so to make it a true open reigning, where you bring your best, anybody, and who knows what you're gonna see, and you walk out there now, you got Tinker with Dreams, you got Patriot, you've got all these, these really marquee horses. And, and by the way, when they're only showing once or twice a year, thank, Patriot can last a long time. Yeah, he could be he could be in everyone's side for five or six years to come. Uh, so, the vision was just build an excitement around the sport uh, and get as many new people to have eyes on it. And then, fortunately, thankfully, the whole industry embraced it, and it's in, it's increased the prize money everywhere. And now you have that the deal that we just had at the American where you have this thing for the top five money earners of last year and the cutting and the reining and the cow horse. Um, and there were 15,000 people in the stands at that. You, to sell out a horse show and to feel that excitement and reining is it's, it's one of those things. It can be tricky to explain the nuance of some things, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but everyone knows a huge stop when they see a huge stop. Everyone knows how fast you run in a circle when you're running a circle. Everyone knows how hard he slowed down. Everyone knows how fast you spin. We can all see it. So you may not understand the, some of the nuance and, and appreciate that beautiful lead change. We'll be there to tell them about it. But everyone understands that horse is running upwards of 50 miles an hour. And you said, well, when you went 50 feet, right? <laughs> There's no missing that. And I just felt TV is my business. I just felt it was so TV friendly. As a, as, a, as a sport, and it turned out to be. It really has. Talking about the venue a little bit, South Point has turned out to be the ideal home for this event. Vegas is a destination people wanted to go to. I always say, have your convention there. Nobody will go to the meetings, but they'll come to the convention. Well, yeah. Everybody's coming to the sports show. And I really think Las Vegas is a key part to that. Did that go into the decision-making process? Yeah, when we, first, when we first came up with the idea Mandy and I, we called around, we thought about where could we do it. And, and really the only place that came to mind was Vegas. Uh, we, we talked to, to 
the Gons and said, hey, can we can we do this? And and Ryan Grounding, the general manager over there, and, and they said, well, what do you want to do exactly? So we're going to have a rain in there um, and we're going to charge. Uh, you know. And I bet I know the response. And she said, you can't charge for a horse show. <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, you can. If you make the horse show for the audience, you absolutely can. Um, and they embraced it and, and they've been tremendous supporters of ours. Uh, and, and they help us put on, I mean, it's such an event. It's so much fun. And, and it's, and it's coincidentally worked out with the other events that we've added that lead up to it. There's just so much excitement by the time you get to a finals that, I mean, you, you watched it last year. It's those, those 15 horse, 16, 15, however many it was, you don't want it to be over. No, it goes Um, like that. We added another set to it because it used to be the 10 10 or 12 Mm -hmm. and it was over in under an hour. Right. And, and I said, I don't want it to be over. So we added, we added 10 and five when we did the qualifiers. And, um, and I think it's right. There's the perfect number. Um, and, and it's loud and everyone's up and all these guys are performing. The horses are performers and the, and the riders are performers and they rise to that occasion. And, and I just can't wait, you know, this year we have, and I continue to add elements to it that help sort of cross pollinate in our worlds. Mm-hmm. Right. You, so we, we have a, a, we have a down the fence challenge with the top cow horse guys. We've got a cutting challenge this year with the top, Thank however many. Yeah. So, and it's going to be monster horses in that world. And so we're going to keep introducing people to the, and I'll tell you what, I was watching the, the cow horse at the, at the world's greatest and some of the raining patterns, those things are running uh, and, and they only spend a third of their time doing it. Somebody's going to get on one of these Betty's of cats or one of these or, or a hot ish or one of these things. And they're going to end up in here and they're going to get something done. No doubt. Um, about it. And which, by the way, would be the greatest thing we could possibly do for the horses because we just introduced that outcross. Um, so it's exciting. We've got the bull's night out was such a big success. We're bringing that train wreck back. I love that. Back. That's not a train it's, wreck. It's Bull a Bunders beautiful Bunders train wreck. It's is amazing. It's incredible. And those guys are athletes. And, and I mean, you, I, you couldn't put me in there with those bulls for anything, but they, they thrive on it and they put on a heck of a show. And, and, and then we do, we do a cowboy challenge. We did it last year. We've, we've refined it a bit this year. So the top cowboys from the 10 biggest ranches in America are going to come and, uh, you know, there were a number of them that last year they, they were trying to decide between driving or flying and they all decided to drive because they'd never flown. I mean, so <laughs> for them to come be in these big lights uh, and get to run for some real money, uh, you know, they can they can win that thing and win more money than they make in a year. And and again, it's just introducing people uh, to, to this sport that you and I love so much. You know, from the first year, from the very beginning, my big takeaway always was and this is something that the event has managed to maintain throughout its history, the atmosphere is beyond electric. I compare it to a playoff uh, sporting yeah. event. I mean, not just a basketball game or a football game. Playoff level intensity, the energy in that building there at the South Point, even South Point employees have told me, we don't see this. We don't see lines all the way through the casino out yeah. the front door for people to watch an event and this is a horse show. I mean, it's, I love the crowd there. Yeah. It's, it, 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 it you know, all these people fly in the, the hotel typically books out for the pre for the next year at the event. Yeah. So the, the hotel was already sold out when we were at run for a million last year. So that's however many five, 600 rooms times however many people. And then they sell out their, their, their spillover hotel. Mm-hmm. And then and that's not counting the people that are staying down the, down the street at the win or wherever they are. And 7,000 people cram themselves in there and it's just become such a marquee event that's, that's so much fun to, to watch. And, and you've got to be like me, you, you know, cause you get the privilege of you're speaking to everyone as they're coming out and they got all that emotion. And I, I commentate the thing and I just, I just can't get enough of it. Yeah, and it's know. over and I'm like, oh, I want to, I want to bring round two in, but, but I think it's special because you have all these great events leading up to it. And then that night, they, it's just about an hour and 15 minutes of the best horses in the world. And the, and these guys and girls running as absolutely hard as they can. It, it really, and, and you brought up the point that I've served that role as a post-game interviewer when those riders comes out. And I know as a television guy who's tried to convey emotion, that raw emotion that we captured from those riders last year, yeah, they weren't responding to me, Taylor. They were responding to that moment. 
and that event. I mean, who can forget the emotion of Jordan McBurney when she knocks that 229 and a half out of the arena? And, you know, there wasn't a dry in the place. No. And that's what's great about this event is because it has put such a big game atmosphere in there. It's made it where the crowd, they'll do anything. They'll reschedule weddings to get yeah. to this event. And the riders have fully bought in. Yeah. Yeah, that was that, that was deeply emotional. And she she up into the apple cart with that second horse in. And she goes down and lays down this run of a life. And, you know, her husband has to come in later. And he tries to get her. I can't remember if he did. He might have got her by half, half a point. point. Yeah. Um, it was incredible. So all the stories that we have in there and now a lot of these people that came to the first one and didn't even know what it was now they know horses and they're wondering is maverick coming back and patriot's going to come back and that's going to be exciting i can't wait well we're going to see unfold at scottsdale and what i want to talk to you about is we have 10 spots left to fill 10 golden tickets and when i look down that lineup of horses that are entered those spots start going pretty fast and here's one of the things i want to talk about this year that i think is so fascinating the European invasion. Yep. When I look at some of these European trainers and the horsepower they have brought in just for this event, two or three of those spots you're taking right there. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it. The Europeans are going to take some of those spots in the run for a million. What do you think about that as this event's grown? Hey, if we're going to say bring your best and this is the war, you know, to win the run for a million, you can say that that is the best horse in reigning. I mean, I think you can, you can honestly say that oh, in that no year. So, so, that's what it was always about. Everyone's always, and this is another one of my fantasies when I was creating this event. Everyone sits around and argues, uh, who's the better team, the 2007 Patriots or the 77 Cowboys or the 78 Steelers? Who's the best? Well, we'll never know. Right. Right. Different eras. Uh, different eras. Now, we kind of get to know because you can show any horse. Horse can be four year. There were four year olds. Jason showed a four year old in it, and then there's ten year olds, eleven year olds, and those horses, like I said before, they can last that long because they show once or twice a year, the qualifier, and then the run for a million. But I tell you what, if you think about who's not, who's who's not qualified, that's going to be showing here. You've got Matt Mills, you've got Kay McCutcheon, who's been qualified every other time. You got his dad, you got his mom, who I think is going to come in. You've got, uh, you got. Jordan and Sean McBurney back. You've got Cole Price, who's a previous winner. You've got Matt Palmer, who qualified last year. He's back. And and I, that's just a few. Not Danny Trembley, Franco Bertolani, Brian I Bell. I mean, you're going through the same thing I am when I'm looking down that list. And you see those great riders with two or three shots. Yeah. And you realize they're, they're getting one of them in. Yeah. You know, they just are. I mean, it's just one rider that can take a slot. But you give those top riders two or three legitimate open horses. And that's why I say those 10 spots are going to fill pretty quickly. And here again, I go back to the Europeans. You know, when they got here, Taylor, I just noticed, and maybe it's the commitment of coming that far, they're practicing at a different tempo here than the Americans are. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I, and, and, and I think that... I mean, I, I understand it, but that could be their philosophy. You know, we, we, we always... Uh, we're very rarely do you sit there and practice too much at plus one speed. Um, but they seem to do I everything mean, at plus one speed. They so. know how to horse show over there. Yeah. And I think this event, like a big turf race in race horsing, sets up really well for the Europeans because they got to make one run. Yeah. And they're really good at setting a horse up to make one yeah. really big run. Yep. You know, those huge opens they've had for years over there in Europe yep. have lent itself to that. But for that reason, I'm just excited to see horses we're not as familiar with that maybe we see on YouTube or some of the highlight shows from the European events. But as you said, what this event has really done is it has drawn out. If there's a great reigning horse in the world, it's going to be here. Yep. Because there were riders qualified last year that didn't feel like they had enough horse. They literally made a worldwide search yes. to bring in the top talent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I couldn't be any happier about that. Yeah, no, it's, it's if if you want to find out what the best horses in the world are, you really can. You can't say that the best from Europe didn't show up here as well because they're here. And and there's there's going to be all there's going to be Germans here. There's Belgian, there's going to be Italy, there's going to be uh there's a few from Italy. Uh help me. There's where's the other one? Switzerland, Sweden, Austria, Sweden, Austria. I mean, yep. It is literally yep. and these aren't just uh, foreign riders, they're world champions. Yes. They're, you know, they come with incredible credentials. So that's a great treat 
for the American fans to get to see. To me, it's like NASCAR going up against F1. Yeah. You know, we're going to, okay, you send your best. We got our best. Let's see who can, who can bring it. And, and then you've got some X factors. I, oh. Gina Schumacher walked by me a little while ago with one of her fancy horses. And let's not forget, she's, she did it. She got qualified two years ago. Um, and she's back to do it again. I watched Gina school her horse in a paid warm up a couple of hours ago. I would not count her out. I wouldn't she's either. An intense competitor. They put together such an incredible team there at the CS Ranch. Dwayne Latimer, um, if you wanted to hire a general manager to run your horse training team, that's the guy. That's the guy. Great eye for talent, great at developing talent. Gina's gone next level. She's always yeah. been a great rider, but since her association with Dwayne started, you see her right in there. Oh, she's the sky's the limit. Yeah. So, we talk about this event, what's building up to it. We know they're going to be an outlier. You know, mm -hmm. when I look down that list of entries and I, I, you know, I don't want to name one now, but somebody's going to jump up and surprise you just like Gina Schumacher did, just like Josh Tisman did. Yes. You know, Hey, um, don't, and we can't count. Yeah. See, that's the problem is you can, I've already forgotten to mention Arno and Dan Huss. And his dreamies. Back. Yes. I'm, <laughs> yeah. There's another one. What is she? 12, 11, yeah. 12. Yeah. She'll don't count her out. Yeah. Yeah. So you can we can keep doing this, and I think Billy Williams got qualified last year, one of the one of the up and coming trainers, and we're going to see more of that. Yeah. I was just out at this horse show in Florida, where I saw a lot of trainers that I'd never seen. There's some talented guys and gals out there on some big time horses, and I've seen a lot of those same trailers here. So there's going to be with the excitement that Run for a Million brought, uh, and 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 just this new excitement around the industry as a whole, because it's not just Run for a Million. Money doubled at the Futurity. It's increased everywhere. You've got you've got horse shows in Florida and in Oklahoma and Tennessee with a hundred thousand added or more, and it's, and it's and that attracts people from other disciplines when they say, "Wow, there's that much money over there." Well, I can I bet I can do that. Well, we saw a lot of them a few years ago. That was a pretty tough transition, but they've had the time. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited to see who pops up that none of us thought of. It's, it's wide open, and we've talked about the finals a lot in Vegas, but I want to bring it back to what we've got here in Scottsdale. Because for my money, Taylor, this qualifier, you know, I've judged for years. I've been a student of this game. I've watched a lot. This qualifier is the best reigning I see all year, and it's for this reason. 90 to 100 horses. Nobody has the luxury of holding back. Everybody has to show their hand. Yeah. In a one-go if you go show at the Futurity or at the NRBC, it's going to take an 18 or a 19 too. That's what you're going to need. You know, you're going to need a couple of those yeah. right there on the bubble, maybe a 20. And, and so you, you, you want to sit there and not play safe, but try to plus half everything and plus three quarter, a few things here and there. It's going to take a 24. Easily. You know, it it's, took a 223 to advance out of this round last year. Yes. It's going to be higher than that. So sure. It is. And and then the question becomes, because the judges are going to set the order. All right. But they're also how how are they going to judge? And and, I, and and if you think about it, a couple of years ago, it, it may have been last year. Sean comes in first horse and lays down a 228. And then we've got 90 more to go. <laughs> Right. Draw and so one. and You're so right. and so they did it and they know they did it. And they said, OK, so now that's that's the benchmark. We just called that a 228. So they, they, they're in that situation. Uh, are they going to are they going to be tight? Are they going to try and you know, the great thing is we broke it up. So the Derby, you've got people that aren't showing mm -hmm. in the run for a million and they're going to Derby on Friday. Right. So those judges are going to get a chance to warm up and, and get a sense of like, OK, we found our groove. Here mm -hmm. we go. And they're going to wake up Saturday morning and know what they're doing. And 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 there's going to be 2,500, 3,000 people in here watching. And and it can't help but get your blood up, right? Yeah. Gets your competitor's blood up, gets the judge's blood up, everyone's blood is up. So I, who knows what it's going to take. But you what what you can't do as a judge is take a set off. You've got to sit there. They're going to work. They're going to sure. be exhausted at the end of this thing. And this um, is a great crew they put together Yes, here. yes. A great panel. Yeah, as as seasoned and as even uh, a, a set of judges as you could put together. One of the things I want to commend you on, you've always run a clean event. It was a priority of yours. You were really ahead of the curve. There's mandatory drug testing at this event this year and at the finals. I think that's great. Uh, just to clear the air, because some people have asked me about that. That comes from you, right? You wanted that. Well, it, it, it's it, it's. 
we have to do it in the run for a million. Sure. We, we number one, I, I'm not going to run the risk of I got a million people, two million people watching this on television, and and for someone to to look for a shortcut uh, and then that horse have an accident. I can't, you know. There's a reason that they don't use them in baseball. We're not supposed to. We're not supposed to use them. Um, not supposed to use them in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, so we never allowed them to be used in uh, in in the run for a million. And ultimately now. Uh, with some changes that have been made in the NRHA, we, we felt that, you know, it, it needs to be consistent. If you, if you, if you're going to show in the qualifier, you need to show under the same parameters that exist for the show, uh, the, the big show in Vegas. And, and using NRHA drug rules, I think those are great guidelines. I commend yeah, you. Yeah, they exist for a reason. Yeah. Uh, and all we're doing is following the rules of the association. Yeah. And I think it's a great step. And I think as our sport continues to grow, it's going to be, uh, something that's just taken for granted. That's just a part of it. And I think that's only a positive thing. Yeah, 100%. So where do you see this event going from here? I mean, what really is the future for this other than just exponential growth from what you've already built? Yeah, the you, I just kind of keep trying to add money to the, to the, to the run for a million finals. Uh, try and get it to where the check to the, the check to the finalist, uh, the winner is a million, period as opposed to a million purse, sure, sure. Yeah, it's a million period. I'm trying to get the purse up this year. Um, ultimately, I think I would like to try and have a, a run for a million that gives away a million in the cutting and the cow horse and the reining. Um, that's the I'm ultimate in. goal. And and I think to, you know, and, they, and we just saw a sample of that sure. uh, at the American, I would do it. I, and it was very, it's great what they did. Teton did a fantastic thing, uh, introduced an entire rodeo crowd to Performance Horse. Um, and they loved it. They did love it. Yeah, they went nuts. It's funny because when the raining went on, I think they thought they were supposed to be quiet. <laughs> so they, everybody was real quiet, like they're going to spook the horse. Like, no, the horse needs it. Um, but I'll do it, you know, it'll be different nights. You'd have one night, you'd have the cow horse. One night, you'd have the cutting. The next night, you'd have the, you know, you'd have the raining. And we're getting there. I, I, bet, I bet within three years, we'll be there. Well, it's already very much like a, uh, a destination, a festival. It's an event people mark their calendars for right now. I'm so excited about Friday and Saturday, especially, and seeing which 10 riders are going to be able to punch their ticket on to Las Vegas. I know it's the most anticipated event of the year, and I just thank you for what you've done to help create and then promote this event. You've stewarded it so well. I'm thrilled that I've been a part of it, but the real fans, or the real winners are the fans of this yep. sport because they've gotten paid off. I would say even more than the exhibitors. Yeah, I, I, you know, these horses have fans now. Legitimately have fans, and the and these riders have fans. It's it's real fulfilling to walk in a horse show and see people sitting in the stands, uh, and and watching it as a spectator for for their fascination and their newfound love, or their maybe they've loved it forever. Um, but it's yeah, we're we're doing as an industry. We're doing things right, and we're progressing, and it's growing as it should be. Well, we're so grateful that we have people like you, great creative people with an ability to tell stories and bring this event to people that weren't even aware of it and this great sport into their living rooms. It's just been great. Taylor Sheridan, I look forward to seeing you Saturday morning when this qualifier kicks off about 100 of the greatest reigning horses you're ever going to see. No fluff and fillers in this class. It is a heavyweight bout from top to bottom. Yep. Yep, it's gonna be it's gonna be good watching. I can't wait. <laughs> For Taylor Sheridan, I'm Steve Ross here at the Cactus Classic, inviting you to come on out and join us Saturday morning with a qualifier for the Run for a Million 2023.